people. Here we go. Some news headlines. Let's go. Hey, come people. Yeah, Alec Baldwin uh, update on a search warrant here. Um, I got a copy of the search warrant, and I'm going to go through it. So if you want to hang around, I'll explain why they wrote it and what I think they're looking for and what, what their belief is. So let's hear what they said on Fox News about it. As we are now learning that Baldwin's cell phone is the focus of a new search warrant tonight. The warrant obtained by Fox News Digital says that law enforcement believes, quote, there may be evidence on the phone due to individuals using cellular phones during and or after the commission of I'll cover crimes. That in the search warrant. Here to break it all down, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, uh, you have been saying from the beginning that this could turn into a legal issue for him. Uh, then he gives this interview that appeared to be coached by lawyers. I have to believe that's the case. Uh, now he's locked into a story that can't be changed. Uh, what's your thoughts on this? Well, this is the eight-page warrant and affidavit in support of it. Uh, they're looking at text messages, emails, uh, video files, as well as photographs. And I okay, so if you want to go watch the Fox News interview, I'm going to go over the warrant now and just kind of I don't think he did a very good job. That's why, I, and of course, Fox didn't put the warrant. I had to go around and search and find it somewhere else. I hate news sources that get documents and then they don't give you a link. But anyway, okay, so I haven't read the warrant, so you're going to be reading with me. I'm going to scan through it. I'll probably misread a couple things, uh, get over it. Uh, anyway, State of Mexico, in a matter of the death investigation of Helena Hutchins. So uh, this is an, an investigation of a murder a possible murder homicide. Therefore, why you do a search warrant is you're looking for evidence. So when you're looking for evidence, you must do a search warrant and you must convince a judge that you believe a very low, I think the standard is a high probability or a, a fair probability is a standard for the law. When I do a search warrant, I have to convince a judge there is a fair probability I might find evidence, and the judge signs it. Okay, here's the matter. The seizure and search of the cell phone belong to believe Apple iPhone due to conversations between the affiant Alex, between the affiant and Alex. The affiant is the person writing a warrant being conducted through iMessages. So he wants to get all the messages that he had conversation. The phone belongs to Alex Ballin and is believed to be in his possession and has a mobile number of blah, blah, blah. The full telephone number is known. However, redacted for confidential and privacy. The carrier of the phone is Verizon Wireless. So not only are they going to want the actual phone for the SIM card or anything that's saved on a phone that may not be backed up to the server, but they're going to give Verizon, they're going to give them everything, all phone calls, how, call, how, many, how long he talked, uh, how many voicemails he has, deleted voicemails, deleted images, deleted texts, text that he did text so they'll, they'll be getting all that uh let's see proof by a fiant for search warrant having been submitted to me i'm satisfied that there is probable cause for a person and property of defiant located at the alleged defiant uh, 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 find the goals exist yeah you are hereby commanded so the judge signs the warrant and all warrants are a command by the court this is a court order the court is ordering people to go and search and look for these things okay you are hereby commanded to search for with a person, place, described to find between six and ten hours. The reason why the hours are here is they don't want them serving search warrants earlier than six or after ten because the likelihood that a person will think that government is a burglar and a high likelihood of violence. Therefore, most states have a time period on when you can serve a warrant. If I wanted to serve the warrant after ten, I would get approval for what's called nighttime service. Nighttime service is normally because I can't find the people there when at, at other times, or I think there's weapons and I want the people to be asleep and I want to hit them at a I mean, I'm not a big fan of nighttime service. I think nighttime service ought to be, you know, so rare that it, it ought to be big news when somebody does nighttime. Unfortunately, now anybody can get nighttime anytime they want by just saying, I think there might be weapons and for officer safety, I want nighttime service. And the judge signs it. It's bullshit. And I've gotten plenty of them, but I, I just think it's bullshit. Serving a warrant, a copy with the alphabet, blah, blah. You're further directed to prepare a written inventory. This is all standard thing. Anytime you do a search warrant, the court orders you to give a 
inventory, usually called a return search warrant, file a return, and that gives you an inventory on what you found. Okay, the judge signed it. Nice signature, judge. The big six. Nice signature, judge. David, whatever. All right, so here we go. Filed on September 16th. Let's see. In a matter, a search to see your cell phone. Affidavit for the search warrant. Okay, so this is where the, the cop, the affiant, has to, not the attorney, lawyers can't get search warrants. I mean, maybe they could. I don't think they do because most most places require a peace officer to get a search warrant. And attorneys aren't peace officers. All right. Uh, I have reason to believe, blah, blah, blah. We already read that. Items to be seized. This is what you want to look for. This is what you want to put in here. And everything I list here because it says when you get a work search warrant, you must describe the purse the person, place, or thing to be searched with specificity, meaning exactly when I'm describing a house, I have to say it faces north. It has a green door on the front. It has the numbers 145 on the left side of the frame of the door. It has a mailbox with the numbers 145 on it. I have to be very specific when I describe this. So he wants a cell phone of Alex Baldwin, a forensic download of the cell phone, including di digital emails, movies, etc. These are all the things. You just put everything in a gamut on here. You want everything on a cell phone. I mean, that's basically, but you have to put all this cool language that everybody just copies and pastes. Passwords, access, etc. Once they get the passwords, then they may get emails because he has his emails to his passwords on his phone. So now they want to do the emails. They want to search all his Yahoo accounts, all his Gmail accounts, all his private accounts, and etc. Cloud devices, meaning if you store, a lot of people say, if you store your stuff on clouds, then the government can't get it. Well, that's not true because we get the cloud and a warrant. All contacts, including names and phone numbers. So if you're in Alec Baldwin's contact list, uh-oh, look out. Who killed? Who didn't kill himself? Whatever. Recent call list of blah, blah, blah. All graphics, short messages, Sims message. So if anybody does search warrant, all they do is copy and paste this. This is just standard search warrant if you want to go through that. Okay, and the facts tending to establish the foregoing grounds for issuance of the search warrant. One, the affiant is a full-time certified peace officer, state of Mexico, currently commissioned, blah, blah, blah. That pretty much says, I'm a cop and I want the warrant. Two, the affiant is aware that suspects, victim, and witnesses may document information relating to crimes on computers and or forms of social media. He should have said, and cell phones, but he didn't. Uh, that, oh, maybe he'll get to it here. That often make or receive, okay, here we go, telephone calls, uh, such information that may exist material or relevant to this investigation. This warrant shall include the viewing, listening to, copying, transcribing, transferring. Again, standard knowledge. I want to be able to do with the information I get whatever I want. Okay? After uh, a client is aware through training and experience that people who have apparent knowledge and incident uh, reach out to other invest ongoing investigation. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So this is why he wants it. Investigation conducted. So this is where we're getting more into the meat. On Thursday, October 21, 21, received a phone call, Bonanza Creek, saying reference to multiple gunshot victims. The initial call was approximately blah, blah, blah. Uh, by Okay, advises they need an ambulance. Okay, we got all that. Santa Fe deputies respond to the scene. Advised there was female subject gunshot wound to the chest, a male subject gunshot wound to stomach and shoulder. The female identified as Hutchins, transported, blah, blah, blah. So we're establishing the crime. A fiant interviewed, that means the officer, interviewed multiple people in reference to this incident to include the armor, the pink haired armor, Hannah Gutierrez Rees, Reed, I'm not sure. Oh, that's the a armor. The gun handler, Annabelle, okay, uh, during Hannah's interview, she said the morning of the incident, she got to work and got guns out. She advised her co-workers, co-worker Sarah Zachary, helped her out with the morning task. Hannah advised after the retrieved the guns, they took them to the set. She should have said, when we retrieved the guns, we cleared them and made sure they were empty. Once we got them up on set, we made sure they were empty. Maybe she'll get to that. We'll see. Hannah said while on set, she dummied the guns up with dummy rounds. Okay, dummied the guns up with gunny rounds, I'm assuming means she loaded them with dummy rounds. Dummy rounds are rounds that look like real rounds, so when you see them on camera, they look like they're loaded. Okay, she dummied the guns up with dummy rounds. Hannah stated that she got to the set at 7.30. 
but didn't dummy the gun up until a short time before lunch. So from 7.30 to 11.30 or 12, she didn't do shit but run around and take pictures of herself holding guns and uh, recovering from her hangover from the night before. I'm just ad-libbing that in. Hannah and Vise, when they all returned from lunch, Sarah, blaming someone else, pulled the gun out of the safe, the gun utilized by Alex, and handed it to her. A fiant asked Hannah if she loaded the gun after lunch to what she stated. It was already loaded before they went to lunch, Hannah advised, which means she didn't check it, she didn't double check it, and she didn't recheck it, which means she's incompetent. We had the gun the whole time before that. We didn't have the gun. You went to lunch. How could you have the gun when you went to lunch? You said it was in a safe. How do you know someone else didn't access the safe? How do you know whoever conducted this interview should be asking these questions? What do you mean you had the guns? Do you have it in your possession? No, I locked it in a safe. Who else has a combination of safe? Has anybody else been in the safe? Is there any way to tell if anybody accessed safe? Is the safe under video surveillance? Somebody should have been asking all these questions. I don't know what the interview was conducted. Maybe I'll find out as I read on. But these are the things that are coming to my mind as I'm reading this. Uh, we had the guns the whole time before that and nothing happened. And I wasn't in there. Oh, so I wasn't even there. So she's giving a lot of excuses on why she didn't load or check the guns. I wasn't in there. They weren't even supposed to be pulled out. They weren't even supposed to be pulled the hammer back. They weren't even supposed to be pulling the hammer back. Oh, so people weren't even supposed to be handling it, but I don't know if they were, and because I'm such an incompetent, purple-haired little liberal that works on a gun thing that I'm scared of guns, she even committed she's scared of guns, she didn't double-check. She's guilty as shit. She, I mean, her her incompetence is just blatant. A fiant asked Hannah, the cop asked the Hannah, to clarify where the guns were located before once to which she responded they were inside with the camera crew, meaning they were unattended, meaning everyone had access, meaning they could have been manipulated, loaded, unloaded, played with, handled, etc. That's basically what she said. They were unattended, and me as an armorer is too incompetent to know that. And she was hardly allowed inside due to COVID. Oh, it's COVID's fault. So she couldn't even go in to check the guns because of COVID precautions. Hen advised she handed the gun to Alex. Ooh a couple of times in the morning inside the set. Hannah said at one point, Dave Halls had the gun when he was sitting in for a shot. She advised she handed the gun off to Dave while he was sitting in, and this handoff occurred after lunch. A lot of people handled this gun, and nobody rechecked it. I mean, what her statement should be, I made sure when we came back from lunch because they were out of my gun that I rechecked and made sure they were only loaded with dummy rounds. I then handed the gun, and when it was handed back to me, I rechecked again that no rounds were manipulated, removed, nothing was changed, and I rechecked to make sure it was loaded with only dummy rounds. She's not saying that because she's an incompetent fool, and she was hired because of her purple hair, and we have liberals wanting Hollywood, and then when they shoot each other, they're going to blame the gun or the bullet or someone else. She advised she handed the gun off today while he was sitting in. A fiant asked Hannah, when was the last time she loaded the gun? And she advised she loaded the gun with five dummy rounds before lunch, meaning she never checked it afterwards. What an incompetent buffoon. Hannah stated that there was one round that wouldn't go in, so after lunch, she took the cleaner, cleaned it out, and put another round in, which brought the total to six rounds loaded. Man. So we have a round that wouldn't go in. Do we know whether the round wouldn't go in because it was a live round, because it wasn't a dummy round, because the gun was dirty? And why was the gun dirty? Why, why wasn't the gun clean? I mean, it's about to be in a movie. Don't you want a nice, clean, shiny? What, what? Hannah described the gun to be a long Colt 45 caliber. Hannah advised they all went to lunch at 1230. And after they came back, she and Sarah took the guns to the set without rechecking them. Notice she specifically leaves out we did not recheck them. She said the guns were all in bags at this point and described the bags to look like socks, basically gun socks or gun bags. She stated the guns were checked on set. Oh, so they were checked again. However, she didn't really check it too much. Okay, let, let's get back to that because this is a really critical statement. She stated the guns were checked on set. However, 
she didn't really check it too much. What the hell does that mean? And why wasn't the investigator clearing that up? Why didn't he follow up? What does checking too much mean? What's a normal check? What's a not, what, how did you check it? Why didn't you check it too much? What the hell? Due to it being locked up at lunch, meaning I assumed I was taking the easy route. I'm incompetent. I didn't want to take the time and maybe save someone's life. So I really didn't check it too much because they were probably locked up at lunch and probably nobody checked them and probably nobody handled them and probably they were safe. What an incompetent buffoon. Hannah said after she did the check, the check that was not too much, she put in the last round. Hannah advised a short time later she remembered she could hear the gunshot. Then heard people calling for medic. Hannah then knew that she was an incompetent buffoon and was looking at a way to blame someone else. Hannah said she looked in to see Joel Souza on the ground as if and ask if he, let me slow this slowly now. Hannah said she looked in to see Joel Souza on the ground and ask if it was the gun. What, 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 what kind of state? What do you mean if it was the gun? If it was a gun that shot him? To which Dave responded, it was the gun that went off. Wow. Hannah said, when she checked the gun after the incident, handling evidence, covering up a crime, she checked the cartridge, which would have been the one that fired, and said the first one she pulled out didn't have that pointing to the projectile into the bullet. Didn't have that, meaning it didn't have the round itself, the, the actual bullet that flew out meaning it was missing, meaning it was a fired round, meaning it was an empty casing. Hannah said she checked all the other rounds and they all had the ringing sound when she shook them. The ringing sound. Maybe the dummy rounds ring when you shape them. I mean, this is a very unclear. See, if I have all these questions and I'm reading this warrant, then the judge had these questions. I can't believe this judge read this warrant and didn't look up at the cop and go, what the hell are you talking about? What's the difference between a dummy round? Why don't you explain a dummy round? What, what, what? She advised the box of dummies may have some wonky rounds. And they received the box approximately a week ago from Steph, Steph Kenny, her supplier. What the fuck? Why, why am I having all these questions in a affidavit that a cop is supposed to be making crystal, crystal, crystal clear to a court and to the judge so he can determine on whether or not to issue a warrant. Why am I asking these questions, people? Absolutely horrible warrant. Hannah made a statement that she did not believe anyone on the film set would be that malicious to anyone on the set would be that malicious to bring live ammo on the set. So that means your dumbass loaded the live round. That's what she just said. Hannah confirmed when she was handed the gun after the incident, she was the only one to manipulate it, meaning handle it. And it was closed when it was handed to her. Okay. So she's saying that Basically, what he's trying to imply in this fucking shitty written warrant is she's implying or he's implying that she thinks the gun wasn't handled by anyone else after the gunshot except her. Wow. Alec Baldwin was brought into the interview room. Man, what a shitty interview of this woman. Man, these cops are incompetent. Alex Baldwin was brought to the interview room approximately 5, 12 p.m., so the gun shot happened at 12.30 after lunch and nobody talked to him for four hours? Are you kidding? I can't believe that. I can't believe a cop showed up on scene who fired the gun, tell me what happened. I just don't believe that. Alec Ball, well, it doesn't say that he wasn't talked to. It's just saying he was brought in the inner room, interview room. Okay, so he's brought in the inner room at 5.15. 
He was advised of his Miranda rights and agreed to speak to detectives. That's good they advised him. I can't believe they didn't talk to him before this and didn't advise him before, but okay. Alex advised, in the scene, he slowly takes the gun out of the holster, then very dramatically turns it, cocks the hammer, which is when the gun went off. Ooh. So this is totally different than what he said in his interview. In his interview, he said he had the gun out and he was being advised by the dead person to move the gun, to hold it like this, to raise it. And then he asked her, do you want me to cock it? Can you see if I cock it? Here, I'm going to cock it. Can Man, he totally either lied here or lied in his interview. When you get conflicting statements, you automatically think cover up. Someone's lying. Which one do we believe? Do we believe you when you lied to us here? Or do we believe you when you lied in the interview? This is very bad. This is why you never give multiple statements. This is why you only give one statement. And this is why Alec Baldwin is an idiot and he will probably get charged. This isn't good. So Alex says he slowly takes the gun out of the holster, then very dramatically turns it and cocks the hammer. And that's when it doesn't say anything about being directed. Doesn't say anything about getting a better camera view. Doesn't say anything. Dude, he, he's such an idiot. Which is when the gun went off. It didn't go off. He pulled the freaking trigger. He said it was supposed to be a cold gun. So no flash charge or anything should have gone off. Alex said all the rounds in the gun were supposed to be cosmetic or dummy rounds. Alec advised, when the gun went off, he could recall Hutchins, that's the victim, the dead girl, going down to the ground. And Joel started to scream. She couldn't scream because she was dead before she hit the ground. She just hadn't bled out yet. Alex said, since they were in rehearsal, he assumed, assumed, he had an empty gun. Therefore, when he shot the gun, Helena was right in front of him. Oh. So he assumed it was empty and he aimed it at her. Doesn't say anything about she told him to pull it. Doesn't say anything about him trying to recreate the scene, trying to get the best camera shot. She was instructing him what to do. None of that shit is said here. Very, very damaging statement. Wow. This is why they're looking at him harder now because they think he's lying. Alex, I my guess is the chance of him getting charged now versus before it might have been 50-50 before. I would say it's like 90-10 now. Once you get somebody lying and someone dies and a person lying is the one that killed them, charges are usually pretty shortcoming after that. Alec described the gun to be a period cult, meaning it was in the current period that the film was being used. He said there were emails transferred back and forth between Hannah and him where she showed him different styles of guns. He said he requested a bigger gun, the little impotent, little penis, pine, tiny penis wants a big, anyway. And she also showed him different styles of knives for the production. Alex was shown a Colt with a brown handle and a cherry handle. He ultimately chose the one with the brown handle. A In a brief search, of Hannah's phone, a fiant discovered conversations about the Russ reproduction dating back to July 14th. A fiant also discovered photographs of recipients of receipts in the phone dating back to September 7th, 21, showing various receipts of businesses, businesses in Santa Fe. A fiant believes gathering information prior to the film start date of Rust is essential for a full investigation. Dude, why are you sucking your own penis? Who gives a shit? Oh, uh, I believe that gathering information prior to the Fence State is essential to a full investigation because I'm so competent, I can't get a freaking decent interview from the person who's responsible for loading the gun. Anyway, I digress. A fire request Alex phone, Alex phone from him as well as his attorney and was instructed to acquire a warrant. So when he asked for the phone, the attorney, which was a good move, saying, if you want the phone, get a warrant. We're not going to volunteer information that may incriminate us. We're going to make you get a warrant to get the phone. Therefore, 
if you find incriminating evidence, we can try to attack the warrant as being no good and get that evidence suppressed. So that's why I told them don't, don't voluntarily give a phone. It's hard to get something suppressed when you actually give the, the cops an interview, when you give them a voluntary statement, when you allow them to take your phone, when you say, sure, I have nothing to hide. Go ahead and search my car, search my phone, search my house. I'm a good guy. I have nothing to hide. It's very hard to get that suppressed later. All right, Alex has contacted a client numerous times through cell phone calls and text messages using the number listed and a client believes that the phone and phone number uses on a regular basis. Okay, so he's establishing that this is his phone and I've called him on it and he uses it and this is why I want it. Okay, I'm okay with that. A client is aware of the entire cellular phone number. However, as we're docked at the beginning, okay, we got that. A client also believes that the phone is an Apple iPhone due to text messages sent and received between defendant and a client being iMessages, which is typical of any Apple. I've got an iPhone. I don't use iMessage. I've never used iMessage. I don't even know what iMessage is. I've had an iPhone for 10 years. But anyway, this affiant believes that this is normal, okay? Affiant is requesting a warrant for the seizure of Alex's cell phone record search for any evidence related to death. I'm okay with that. This, that's, that's okay. Affiant believes there may be evidence on the phone due to individuals using cell phones. What evidence? There may be evidence, but what are you looking for? I'm looking for information to tie down the timeline. I'm looking for information. Your client is requesting information on his phone that I might find photographs before or after the scene that may be relevant to the investigation. There may be a photo of the table or the gun in the sock that I don't know. There may be a photo of him posing with the gun before the scene or after the scene. What gun was loaded? Were the bullets the same? I may be able to see a photo in the cylinder and I may see that one round is different. I want to look at everything on his phone because I believe that because he's using the phone regularly that there's probably going to be evidence either through phones, messages, conversations, cell phone, voice recordings, etc. that may be pertinent to my investigation. That's what I would have put in a general thing. Mine would have probably been longer because I, I, I don't want my over warrant turned. I've never had a warrant overturned and I don't want a warrant overturned. And when you do these vague statements, you allow the defense to go, uh, you know what? Your affiant believes there may be evidence. What evidence? Well, due to individuals using their cell phones. Yeah, we all use a cell phone. So you're saying everybody that uses a cell phone has evidence? Such information, if it exists, such if it exists. Again, what information and what exists? Maybe material and relevant. We, we get it. There may be information. What are you looking for? A, a client was also made aware that there were several emails and text messages sent and received regarding the movie possession rush in the course of the interviews. Okay, this is a good thing to be looking for. At least he put one thing. Can, can he get a warrant just to look for this. He can. So at least he puts something specific that he's looking for. A client has not included every fact related to this investigation. You put that in there because when the defense attorney comes up later and goes, well, why didn't you put this in a warrant? Well, I said in a warrant that I didn't include every fact and I can't put everything in there. I merely needed to establish something that I was looking for that I thought may exist and it's reasonable for me to exist. And not only is it reasonable to me, when the DA reviewed it, it was reasonable to him. And not only was it reasonable to me and the DA, when the judge reviewed it and signed the warrant, he thought it was reasonable to him. That's why I did it. And that's how you would answer when an attorney, a defense attorney is trying to attack your warrant. Okay, but a client has not included every fact related to this investigation, but has included only those facts affiant believes are necessary to establish probable cause for the issuance of the warrant. And what is probable cause? Probable cause is that set or, or, or of facts and circumstances that would lead a reasonable person to believe a crime has been committed and the person that I'm discussing, the suspect, is related to that crime. We already know that Alex Baldwin fired the gun that killed the person. There was a murder. He's a suspect, therefore, I believe I want a search warrant for his phone because I think it will obtain information. As required by the New Mexico Electronic Communications Privacy Act, information obtained through 
the execution of a warrant that is unrelated to the objective of the warrant and non-exculpatory to the targeted individuals shall be sealed and shall not be subject to further review, use, or disclosure except pursuant to a court order to comply with discovery of such. Okay, so what, I've never heard of this New Mexico Electronic Community Privacy Act, but what, what he's saying here, it sounds like they're saying, look, when you do a blanket warrant for somebody's cell phone, you can't go in there and find child porn or find that he's sleeping with an underage child and then use that evidence later, which is kind of odd because if I get a search warrant for your house and I'm looking for drugs, I can use guns, I can use child porn, I can use anything I find because I'm authorized to be where I'm at through the warrant. Therefore, anything I find is discoverable and I can use against you. Why in this act are they saying, when I find other crimes in your phone, I can't use it unless I get another court order, which is really just basically, you know, big freaking deal. I mean, so what? Let's say I look for his phone and there's nothing about the, the murder that I can see, but I find a picture of child porn. Then I do another warrant and I do a warrant saying attached is warrant so-and-so and I need a warrant to put the the photos that I found and search for more photos because when I was looking for information on the homicide, I found a photo of what I consider to be child porn, which I have attached in a screenshot or in a JPEG and I've taken a picture and I've attached it. And this is the photo that I want that I found. And this is why I believe that there are other crimes going on by this person. And I want another warrant, another court order to go and search for this new crime. Okay, so that's how that, that's what this Electronic Communication Privacy Act is all about. In my brief, uneducated, just, you know, my experience, that's probably what's going on. Okay, what may be covered exculpatory. Exculpatory evidence is anything that the prosecution finds that he must give to defense if he thinks it will help the defense or could be used to prove the defense innocent or guilt. I must give him everything. The problem with exculpatory evidence, and there are any lawyers out there, you can come on and argue about it, is it's bullshit because the DA gets to decide what he thinks. I have had DAs that I'm like, are you going to discover this in the discover package? And they go, no. And I go, why not? And he goes, I don't think it helps a client. And I'm like, I think it would help his client. I think it puts in doubt on bullshit. I think it's exculpatory. And you know what they say? I don't care what you think. You don't get to decide. Me, as the DA, gets to decide, and I ain't giving it to the defense. Esculpatory evidence makes people feel good, but it's bullshit because the DA, the government, gets to decide what they give. Now, if they don't give something, and that by some chance, the defense finds out, and then they go in front of a judge, and the judge says, you know what? I think it should have been discovered. Guess what happens? Nothing. The, the prosecution has to give it to them. That's it. Nobody gets penalized. Nobody goes to jail. Nobody gets charged with a crime. That's why exculpatory shit that lawyers and, and cops that think they want to sound cool and talk about exculpatory evidence, they don't have a freaking clue. The government gets to decide what is exculpatory. And when they decide wrong, most of the time the defense never finds out. So why do you, why would you want to give, if you're a crooked DA in the government and you want to win a trial, why would you want to give something that, you know what, if the defense can't find out about it, fuck them. The only way I get caught is if he finds out. And then when I get caught, I say, I didn't think it was exculpatory. And the defense goes, your honor, it's clearly exculpatory, it's misconduct, it's blah, 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 blah. And the judge goes, I got to agree with the defense. I think you should have discovered it. He gets it now. Okay, I'll give it to him. He don't get the other 10 things that I didn't discover. See, to me, exculpatory should be everything. If the government has it, the defense should have it. And that's not the way it is. The prosecution gets to decide. All right, may or may not be. I should probably cut that little part out and do something on exculpatory evidence because I get tired of cops running around. Man, that's exculpatory. You can't hold that. You're a freaking idiot. They withhold exculpatory evidence all the freaking time. Okay which may or not be considered exculpatory by the defense, may not be immediately clear to the investigation or prosecution. 
Review of the information from the search warrant will require an analysis of data records, communications, location services, and related materials specifically related to the focus of the search warrant. This review and analysis shall be conducted within a reasonable time period. Which, what is a reasonable time period? Everybody put down what they think a reasonable time period is. And I'm going to get a hundred different ones. And if you ask a hundred attorneys what a reasonable time period is, they will all say, when courts use this reasonable time period shit, they don't want to hold it down. Why can't they say no longer than two weeks? No longer than a week. Must be within three days. Why can't they say that? Why? Because government and attorneys and courts like to make shit difficult for people to hold government accountable. Reasonable time period means you can't hold government accountable. If it said it must be done in a week, guess what? Government has to be held accountable. If they don't do it within a week, they violated it. So we don't want to put a week. We need to put reasonable time period. Your Honor, and you know how this got in there? Well, never mind. I mean, I could talk about it ever for how these attorneys. Again, any information obtained through this execution of the warrant that is unrelated to the objective of this warrant will be sealed and later uh, destroyed has feasible of termination, adjudication, conclusion, investigation. You know what this means? This means the government gets to decide what they want to keep what they want to leak, what they want to save, and what they say, you know what, we destroyed everything. But they didn't destroy everything. And then later it's leaked by an anonymous source. Or it's leaked by a government official who doesn't want his name to be revealed. This is why government, that's why they should discover everything. And then the defense gets to say, Your Honor, out of this discovery of everything, here's what we want destroyed. And then the judge can say, government, you're required to destroy this. But Rick, that would hold government accountable. Exactly, you freaking morons that keep wanting to come here and argue with me on how great the government is and you want to cooperate with them. All right, is that the end of the warrant? That's the end of the warrant. Hey, I got through that pretty quick, 36 minutes. Okay, so that's the warrant. I'll upload it and put a link if you want to download it. All right, we'll end that there. You know what, before I end this, because of this warrant, because they got a search warrant and because they're looking, this is going to lead to statements, photos, and information, which is exactly what a search warrant is supposed to do. I'm looking for evidence. When they find more evidence of a statement that is not corroborated or that obviously is withholding or what is different than what is known between the interview and the first statement, the second statement, or the initial statement, or what he said to a friend or what he texted to a friend or what he said to what he what he said to somebody in a message. What when all these inconsistencies get put together, the odds of them getting charges goes up tenfold, hundredfold. All right, we'll end that there.